Welcome. Uh, we are continuing on in our forgiveness series. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for using this teaching as you do with your small group or with your roommates or whatever. Uh, we welcome you to be part of our church in this format. So again, we've been in this forgiveness series for quite a while. Tonight we're moving on to how to apologize. We're actually moving on to reconciliation. Can reconciliation actually happen when there was a wrong done to you? Forgiveness is all about the past. It is that wrong that happened. Forgiveness is our choice to participate in what God has already done. This is our decision. Then we go on the journey of forgiveness, try to heal from the wrong that was done, remembering that correcting wrong is God's justice. And what, the, what God asks us to do is to forgive. And forgiveness requires just one person. Reconciliation is all about the present. This is a way for the person who was wrong to maybe reconcile with the person who hurt them and have a renewing of a relationship or healing of some sort. Reconciliation always requires two people. Sometimes the hurt party or the party hurt you just don't want to have reconciliation. Then we've got to leave the justice to God. But sometimes we can be a part of God's justice by our willingness and our obedience to be a part of the reconciliation process by offering our apology. Because whether, you know, something was done wrong to you and it was 99% their fault, there might still be 1% our fault. Now, I'm not saying, you know, we need to be the one to apologize for that 1%. I don't know. But maybe God will be calling you to be a reconciler in your life, which means you are one who's going to be first to apologize, to apologize for your part of this. But again, it takes two people to reconcile. And God's commandment on us, where there are no exceptions, is for the forgiveness part. But maybe, and this is what tonight's going to be all about, if you can apologize well, there can be some healing for that went wrong in this relationship. And the third part is trust, and that's all about the future. Trust is, um, involves risk. And there's going to need to be some discernment. We talked about discernment a couple weeks ago, whether you can trust this person again to be in a relationship. So in two weeks, we're going to talk about, this will be our last sermon on this topic of forgiveness, about how to trust again. And it's going to include for you a list of things to help you with that discernment and trusting again. And for the next two weeks, we're going to talk about like how to apologize well. This is going to be some fun in it. And it's going to be some really practical life lessons for you to be that reconciler. Because a good apology versus a bad apology can bring a whole lot of healing, right? That's what we want to try happen. We want you to be part of the healing process, to be a representative of Jesus here on this earth by being an apologizer, which is part of being a healer for people. Ephesians 4.32, it says, instead, instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Having this forgiveness in our heart, recognizing how God has forgiven us, going through the brave journey of, of forgiving ourselves and forgiving God for our anger when we feel like he abandoned us or forgiving someone else in our own journey of forgiveness does make us tender-hearted. And this is a good place to be. It's, it sounds vulnerable, but I was listening to a, a Brene Brown podcast earlier today, and she says this so often. Vulnerability is our measure of bravery. So if you're going to choose to live this vulnerable life, it's a brave life. And you can be, again, you can be this reconciler and this healer. And Ephesians 4.32 is all about being tenderhearted and being kind to each other. And in Proverbs 14.9, this is a great proverb, fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Be one of those godly ones especially if God's calling you to do that. The book resource for the next two weeks is going to be this book, 
The Five Apology Languages by Gary Chapman. This is the same guy who gave us the five love languages. He's also given us five languages of apology and five languages of anger. We're going to um, talk about those more next week. In fact, in your weekly email, there's going to be an online quiz to take. Take that quiz this next week. Bring, print that out. Bring that with you next Friday night. And we're going to talk together about our apology languages because it really helps to speak in an apology language to have this healing happen. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that next week. Um, so when it comes to apologies, remember this. We are imperfect humans prone to error and defensiveness. All our lives, we're going to take turns being the one offended and the one who's going to offend others. So again, let's walk in this tender-hearted way of being quick to apologize. An apology can help or free the person from hurt, from that life-draining anger, that bitterness, and that pain. A good apology can validate that their sense of reality by affirming, yes, their feelings make sense and we finally get it. Have you ever been on the receiving end of something that was wrong and you're like, you try to figure out what happened and you just you spend all this time, all these hours trying to figure out what happened. But when you get that apology, you're like, oh, that makes sense now. I, now I understand and it's just so much easier. The pain becomes less because there's some sense as to what happens. A good apology can do that. An apology does not try to silence your anger. Apologies are not manipulative tools. Apologies do not mean you are weak. If you're not giving the other person, it doesn't mean you're giving the other person an edge. An apology allows the hurt party the space to explore the possibilities of healing instead of just trying to figure it out. Again, we lose so much time trying to figure out what went wrong. Some parents are reluctant to apologize to their children. I want to take a little segue here on this because I know not all of you are parents. I want you to understand something about children. They have a strong sense of justice. It's, it's just innate in them. It's only when they become older and more jaded and hurt by life do they understand that unfair things happen and that injustice happens and they become jaded. Children are bright and black and white and there's a, they just have a sense of justice. This is why they think things are so unfair when one of their toys is being given to somebody else or any of those fights that you parents hear all the time about things being unfair. So when you as a parent can apologize to your child when you were wrong, you're actually giving them a sense of justice. And I know you feel like you may be not parenting or you, you know, giving up the power you have as a parent, but actually you're giving them a gift to say, yeah, I was unfair in that moment and I'm apologizing. Do it quickly for the small things so you don't have to feel like you're, you know, you've lost your parenting authority because you're not. You're giving them this gift that, yeah, things, was, things were unfair. I did something that was unfair, but I can apologize. It really speaks to their sense of justice and it, it endears them to you that their parent also respects and wants justice for their lives. It's very important to a child. And again, once we understand apology languages, this conflict may also even go over better. You can't demand an apology from someone and someone can't demand an apology from you. Apologizing is vulnerable and it is just not authentic. It's just not real. You're gonna actually kind of feel like a child again, right? A demanded apology kind of makes you feel like you're groveling. And it's, it's, just, it's just not going to be true, right? Also, maybe you want to apologize to someone, but that person just doesn't want to hear it ever or right now. You got to give that person the space. Remember, it takes two people to apologize. And if that person's not ready for it, don't demand it. Just, just let it go. There are three levels of apologies, simple, medium, and tough. All of these are going to make sense, but we're going to talk a lot about the tough ones coming up here. So a simple apology is really that there was a wrong that was done. 
but it might not be anyone's fault. But it is just nice to hear an apology. I am, you know, I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of my graduated teens, and lately I've got one who's just having some troubles with her son. And it's probably a couple of times a week I'm sending her an apology. I'm just, I'm sorry. Now, it's, I didn't do anything wrong to her son or to her, but she's having a hard day. She's feeling a lot of pain. And my apology is just saying, I'm sorry. I know you feel pain. I know you feel like a bad parent. I'm sorry you feel that way. And it is just this healing way to saying, I see your pain. I see a wrong what was done to you. Or this can happen with strangers, and it's so kind. And that's the point, right? To be kind and tenderhearted. Say you're in a store and someone bumps into you rudely and just walks off, and you're like, and a stranger walks up to you and says, I'm sorry. Now that stranger wasn't the one that was rude, but saw what happened and just empathetically apologizing makes the whole situation feel better, right? This is Ephesians 4.32. Be this kind, be this tender-hearted. The opposite of this is say you're in a doctor's office waiting for your doctor appointment and you wait in the waiting room for an hour and no one ever apologized to you. That changes the experience of that whole appointment, doesn't it? So be quick to the simple apologies. Be tender-hearted and be kind. A medium apology is a wrong was done. You did a wrong, someone else did a wrong. There's something, there's a conflict here. Be quick to apologize if you can so the problem stays in this medium level. You feel a little regret, so that's gonna help you try to get to this faster. Um, sometimes we believe, like we don't wanna bring it up again, or we don't wanna make a big deal about what happened, and maybe it really wasn't that big deal. I don't know how this other person feels, and you know, and we just think things left, things go unsaid. How about you just apologize when it's more on the simple side and say some things, do some of these rules we're going to talk about and just be kind. Because then if some things are left unsaid and brew into bitterness, it's not going to happen. This is a medium apology. Then there's the tough ones. These are the ones that are very vulnerable. Um, and sometimes you just have to go through a very vulnerable apology for healing for yourself and for that other person. And it makes you sick, it makes you sweat, but you know, you know it has to do it. Because we have to take responsibility for our part, whether it is um, a tiny part or a large part, whether both of you are at fault or the person at fault is just a complete jerk and unreasonable but you reacted wrong you need to take your part and apologize for that because we are responsible for our behavior that was done to us and i had to i had to do this over the summer i was something wrong was done to me and in my response I reacted wrongly and I knew the minute I reacted but I also was very justified in my reaction but I knew over a couple of weeks time I had to apologize for what was done this was tough this was hard I'm gonna get back to that story coming up here Hebrews 12 14 through 15 says work at living in peace with everyone okay be kind be tender-hearted and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Look after each other so that none of you fails to receive the grace of God. And part of this forgiving life, you guys, is just reflecting God's grace because he forgave us first. This, like I talked about weeks ago, is this is a brave way to live, to dare to love and dare to forgive. You're going to live brokenhearted. But oh, what a big life this is. What a brave storytelling life that you get from this. Back to my scripture. Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grows up to trouble you, corrupting many. I talked about bitterness last week. 
If there's not a chance of reconciliation, there's a chance that bitterness can grow. And we want to do our part to stop that so there can be peace and we can be part of this grace of God that we have received. There are three things an injured party needs to hear in this act of reconciliation. Clear, direct, heartfelt validation of the awfulness of the experience. Affirmation that the feelings and perception now make sense. And to not be alone in the pain. I want to segue a little bit about the difference between feeling guilt and feeling sadness. Because a lot of times it's easier to feel guilt and to want to apologize a lot because of this guilt when you're really feeling sadness. So say for example, you have a conflict in a friendship or you lost a friendship. Instead of just being sad that this friend walked away and kept your secrets, we tend to um, feel guilt and we try to apologize or over apologize so that um, there's like we did something wrong to make this thing, thing go away when really it's just super sad that your friend walked away from you. This becomes even more true in family relationships. It is easier to be the daughter that apologizes to your mom a lot than to deal with the sadness that your mom doesn't love you in healthy ways. So you carry this guilt that if I could be a better daughter, so I'm gonna apologize and try harder and harder, and you carry this guilt all the time, and it's just really just simply sad that you're just not loved in a healthy way. So there's nothing here to apologize for, it's just really sad. And you probably need to forgive for that unhealthy love and then set these boundaries because forgiveness always causes boundaries. Do you see the difference there and how guilt sounds like a friend and sadness is just too sad and we'd rather not deal with it? But I want you to see the difference. If you're gonna become a reconciler, I want you to see the difference. Now for the rules of apology. These are gonna be so helpful. They're kind of fun. If you want to laugh, if you want to think of stories to tell because of experiences, go ahead because you're going to want, I mean, we had a lot of time, fun time the night laughing at some good stories of apologies that really didn't go as apologies. So the first rule is do not add but. I'm sorry, but. This, as soon as you hear a but in apology, it just takes the whole apology away, doesn't it? So when I made this very hard phone call for this tough apology I had to do, because I was wrong, I initiated the phone call, I initiated the conversation from small talk into apology, and I was very clear about what I was apologizing for, and I got back, I'm sorry too, but blah, 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 blah. The minute I heard that, I just knew this was not sincere, this was condescending, and I just knew our friendship was over. I listened, closed the conversation well, and just put that person in my unsafe category. And that's where this person remains to this day. The minute you feel the need to explain the background of what happened, you just took away from the apologizing moment. You can do that in the future. But at this moment, both of you need to be vulnerable to receive and hear each other. But adding that but makes you immediately defensive. It puts you immediately like you were right to hurt me that way. And there's no reconciliation there. Second rule, don't say the words, I'm sorry you feel that way. Because now, you're avoiding taking responsibility for your part. I'm sorry you feel that way. You just threw all of the problem onto the other person. Like it's their problem you have in this conflict. A true apology keeps a focus on your actions. You did do something wrong. It may have been small, it may have been huge, it may be the whole problem, but you did something wrong. And they had an emotional reaction let them. 
but don't apologize for them on behalf of that. That's not your responsibility. You're taking on responsibility for your feelings, your actions, and what went wrong. Oh, doing this, you kind of been slyly apologizing to, for them, for their actions. That's not your responsibility. Another rule, do not add the word if. I'm sorry if, blah, 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 blah. I'm sorry if you're sorry you did this, etc. Again, just taking you out of your res responsibility. It's condescending and it's conditional. And that is no apology. There's no vulnerability in that. And it is separating you from your responsibility. The minute you hear that, just know there's not reconciliation happening. And this person may be going to that unsafe category. Don't turn this into a time of instructions. Parents, when you got your kids' attention and you're having this moment together of vulnerability, of apology, boy, you want to turn it into a teaching moment, don't you? Or with your husband and wife? Don't. Just stick with the vulnerability. Let the teaching happen in the future. Because this is a vulnerable moment. This is a healing moment. This is reconciling. Just don't turn it into an instructional time. And also don't blur the apology. There's a difference between apologize to your dad for giving him a headache or apologize to your dad for not turning down the music when he knew he had a headache. One is much more specific. One is not an exaggeration. And one is giving you the responsibility of what you're apologizing for. And say, you know, you got a tough situation and in that tough situation, you've been pretty hurt and say in that hurtness and that numbness and how you've coped to get through, you've added on an extra 30 pounds and you're mad at that person because that person's caused you to weigh 30 extra pounds. It's not that person's responsibility to apologize to you for those 30 pounds. That was your responsibility. Yes, there was a wrong done to you. And you want to have reconciliation for that wrong that was done. But if your reaction to that wrong is what caused you to put on 30 extra pounds, that's not going to be apologized for. You need to apologize to yourself for making that decision. So do you see the specificity? Sorry about that. Helps make a better apology. Don't use an apology as a default. This is that over-apologizer. Maybe that's you or maybe you know somebody like this. But this is not grace and this is not good manners. This is that person that just wants to avoid conflict or this person who um, uses this as a numbing behavior to protect their low self-esteem or their chance of rejection. So they're apologizing quickly and overly and it's for every little thing. And when you're in it, you just know it's not sincere. You know, you know it's something's wrong with them. Overdoing this type of an apology, being this over apologizer, you're actually placing the burden on the person you're apologizing to. They feel bad. They feel bad that you feel bad. And then somehow in this conversation turns into giving this person who's over apologizing a compliment. Like it went from a wrong that was done, so this person has to apologize, but they begin over apologizing to over apologizing to you say something kind to them and a compliment, but you were the one that was wronged. This is just, it just doesn't work. Don't be that kind of person. Um, don't underdo. You just sometimes an, an apology just requires action on your part. Make restitution if you have to. If you spilled that wine glass and caused a stain, get that stain cleaned up. You can apologize for that stain, but seeing that stain there may just may cause some resentment, may cause some bitterness. I told this silly story tonight, but it's really kind of true. Um, back when I was in college, I had an apartment with some roommates. And one of my roommate's friends asked to borrow a pair of jeans of mine, you know, my favorite jeans that fit really well. And I let her borrow them, no big deal. Um, but she didn't return them right away. 
and finally I started asking for them to be returned and she finally came and put them back in my closet folded up and I took them out to wear them again and she must have bleached them because they were just shredded which would be cool these days but it wasn't cool back then but she ruined my good jeans and she never apologized now I'm over it I mean I'm over it but whenever my roommate who's still one of my best friends talks to this friend my first thought is Annette I mean it just it's not a good thought that if she had just really made the restitution for those jeans there would be zero thought today but because she didn't just don't underdo it if you have to make restitution just just do it um, stick to the facts when you're apologizing don't overly accuse, overstate your case, or assume more than your fair share of the blame. Because the listener who's, already, who's been wronged is already on this defensive state. It's going to actually be listening to make sure you focus on the facts and that what he or she is hearing from you, they want to hear it right. So if you overestimate or over-exaggerate or do something, the minute you do that, they stop listening. The hurt returns. You don't understand because you just went off into this tangent and said something. And there is actually more hurt growing. And this apology then becomes fake, insincere. So just stick to the facts. Sometimes you have to practice this. When I made that phone call, I kind of practiced it because I, I was so hurt still. But I knew what I had to apologize for, so I stuck to my facts and got it out and I feel good about what I had to say. Another rule, say it shorter. <laughs> Over talking definitely leads to under listening. Apologizing doesn't need to be a speech, it doesn't need to be a teaching moment again. It just doesn't need to be a defensiveness of your behavior. That's, but all these extra words are being added onto, right? They're defending your behavior. You just need to say it. Don't over talk because you want the apology to be heard and that's how that happens. An apology is not an automatic ticket to forgiveness. An apology is not a bargaining chip and again there's no guarantee that you two are going to reconcile and return to the way things were or grow in a stronger direction. It's just, it's just the right thing to do. It's the kind thing to do. It's a way to keep your heart tender. It's a way to help that other person heal. It's vulnerable, but it is worth it. And the last rule is just don't attack someone's character. Don't bring shame into this situation. Um, it's painful enough when someone has hurt you, when there's been a wrong happened to you. You don't need to attack my character as you're defending yourself. Just, you don't need to attack your own character as you're defending yourself. Just keep that shame part just out of it completely. There was a proverb that we read, Proverbs 14, 9. Pretty brilliant. It says, fools make fun of guilt, but the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. The guilt that you feel is that Holy Spirit prompting that said, you did something wrong. Maybe on that simple level, maybe on that medium level, and maybe over time on that tough le level. I say this often when I teach. I am pro-guilt. Guilt is what the Holy Spirit uses to catch our attention so we can write something that was done wrong. Fools make fun of that guilt. Guilt can also have a chance to turn into shame. And shame is very, very different. Shame lies to you. Shame's goal is to destroy you. Shame wants to keep you small. But when you feel that guilt, don't be the fool. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Take ownership for what you have done wrong and then to find the way to apologize. Let the godly acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Acknowledge it and seek reconciliation. Be that reconciler. Be the heart of Jesus that has forgiven first, has forgiven you of much. So may you this week 
be an apologizer, be tender-hearted, and be kind. May this life of forgiveness all of a sudden be something that you dare to do. May you live this brave life. I'll see you next week with more on apologizing. <laughs>